This is Chiswick House, where some of the most celebrated figures of the 18th century gathered to enjoy music, sparkling conversation and intelligent debate. Amongst them, Handel, Alexander Pope, Jonathan Swift and several crowned heads of state. It was here at Chiswick that William Kent started a movement that was to go on to become one of England's greatest contributions to European art and architecture. Together with his friend and patron, Lord Burlington, he began to break down the rigid formality that had characterised gardens of the early 18th century and began to make them more naturalistic. It's that style of gardening that we still call today the English landscape garden. What is so extraordinary and important about Chiswick House and Gardens is the way that architecture and landscape combine to form a single coherent work of art. And we now have the opportunity for the first time this century to bring all this back into its original state for future generations to enjoy. Completed by 1730, Chiswick House was the vision of Lord Burlington, a renowned architect and patron of the arts who was inspired by classical Rome. Burlington's Palladian House, unique in its time, launched a new taste in architecture which was to spread throughout Britain and North America. Burlington's friend, William Kent, realised his vision for the gardens, where he created a landscape without line or level, that had never before been seen anywhere in Europe. This site is hugely important for English garden history. Prior to Burlington and Kent's efforts at Chiswick, gardens were formal, gardens were enclosed by walls. Kent is renowned for, for leaping the fence and, as it were, linking gardens with their landscape beyond. So in a small, fairly insignificant area of Chiswick, this is where the English landscape movement was born. This influenced landscapes not only in Britain, but in the rest of Europe and the world. Despite its enormous historical significance, for too long this wonderful estate has suffered because of split management and inadequate funding, and the rate of decline has been alarming. But now Chiswick's fortunes are about to change. The recently formed Chiswick House and Gardens Trust will work with funding partners to guide the restoration project and look after the future management of the site. I was very intrigued when um, I was approached and asked whether I knew very much about Chiswick. Um, I'd often been here as a child and I had walked in the gardens, but I had no idea that it was a partnership between English Heritage and the Hounslow Borough Council. And when they told me that uh, they had reached an agreement to form a new charitable trust, which would take over not only the fundraising, but also the administration of this magic site, um, and they asked me to be their chairman, I leapt at the opportunity to do so. The project team has developed a £12 million regeneration project to restore the site to its former glory and secure its future. It's vital that this future is sustainable. And that's why they've developed a business plan that balances the needs of the community as well as commercial interests. And to make sure that they're on track, the team consults regularly with local people. We have to have a very carefully balanced plan for how we can bring income to support the grounds and the house. Well, that means an element of commercialisation, but not necessarily a full commercialisation at all. It's having a balanced programme, community-based events, uh, making sure that the park and the house are open to the widest sections of the community, but also having events that can generate money and to make a sustainable future for the house and grounds. Poor and sure there's no one better to endorse your humble Local people care passionately about Chiswick House and already play an important part in the sustainability of the project. Every year, the Chiswick House Friends stage an opera to raise money for the restoration. Their support for the project is incredibly important. <laughs> Another important group of people are the Goosefoot volunteers, the people who generously contribute their time every Monday to the upkeep of the gardens. I was walking through Chiswick House and I saw somebody digging and I said, are you a volunteer? And I, they said yes. So I went to, actually it was break time, and just said, can I help? And they said, wow, yes, please. 
Oh, I just love being here. It's a, it's a wonderful park, a, a fabulous house. It's everything about the place is lovely. We try just to keep the gardens basically looking halfway decent. And we all love it. I mean, it's the first time in my life I've looked forward to Monday mornings. <laughs> we have nothing like this at home at all. And um, I, it just fascinates me that somebody uh, had a dream and they put it together. I think it's very important that we should look after it and care for it because it's part of the history of our country and uh, we're, we're very sad to lose it. Limited and appropriate commercial use is a good source of funds. Today we are using the Chiswick House grounds as a backdrop for a fashion editorial shoot for an American magazine. I've been here before as a tourist a few years back, just fell in love with it. This conservatory was designed by Samuel Ware in 1813 and it's situated on a, a low terrace and looks out across these beautiful Italianate gardens and it was in fact the last of its type. The lean-to style was relatively common in 18th century kitchen gardens but the pioneering use of a central dome marks a transition from kitchen garden glasshouse to elegant conservatory. These camellias here are more than 200 years old this one is one of only two of its type in existence, the other one's in New Zealand. But the lure of Chiswick House and Gardens is much more than simply its heritage. This park and garden receives a million visits every year. Many of the people who come bring their dogs. They come here to enjoy themselves, but they also come here to be educated about the history of gardens. So we welcome everybody from 2 to 102 in this garden. Chiswick is a world-class site. However, if you were to visit the gardens today, you'd have very little understanding of its significance and of its importance. This project provides a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get this right. Thanks to the generosity of a number of private donors, money's already been secured for some important advanced works. And very excitingly, recently, someone's given a very large donation to restore the wonderful cascade behind me. Private funding has also enabled the installation of two magnificent sphinxes where they originally were, standing guard at the forecourt of the house. It's also made possible repairs to the obelisk and the provision of a learning centre for school visits as well as for adult learners. But this is merely the start of the restoration process. The restoration works at Chiswick aim to maintain a balance between recapturing the original vision and providing unique public benefit. The programme of works includes the restoration of the garden buildings and sculpture, the restoration of historic landscape features, such as the wonderful patois or goosefoot, and the general renewal of the parkland. All the paths will be improved, trees and shrubs replanted, and water quality upgraded across the estate. New seating and railings and better security measures will contribute to a sense of permanence and continuity and make a visit to Chiswick the uplifting experience it was meant to be. In a world of mega fundraising targets, the £2 million that's needed here is a relatively small amount to secure a huge difference. Please help by making a donation to the Trust. Your gift will ensure that this precious place will receive the attention it needs and the attention it deserves. <laughs>